Hey guys, welcome back to the Godot Wave Shooter tutorial series. This will be tutorial number 12, and this will actually be the final tutorial in the series. So the reason why this is the last tutorial is I don't need the extra features. I already set up the stuff so you guys can build upon it, and we're basically going to be finishing up all the mechanics that will be in the game. And you guys can obviously keep expanding upon it, and I love seeing your guys' stuff in the discord and i'm also doing this because i want to make sure we have room for other tutorial series so i don't have like this massive 23 tutorials long tutorial series because most people aren't going to want to watch 23 tutorials i want to leave room for other stuff and other youtube content so that's the whole reasoning behind why this is the last one. In this one, we are actually going to be setting up blood fading out, uh, adding a save system for the high score stuff. So let's get right into it. Now for the blood, open up the blood particles. There's a couple things right now that's happening with these blood particles. If I go in the script, it freezes the blood by sending all these processes all the way to faults. And what happens is any of this stuff that happens below this node, like let's say we had another timer that we wanted to fade out the blood. Well, that timer would actually get, won't process anymore because it's inheriting the processes from this particle. And to fix this, we're actually gonna add a new node just going to be a normal node 2d and we are going to make this node 2d we're going to make the scene root right here if you right click it we're going to make this the scene root the reason why we're making this the scene root is now we can have another timer that's under the node 2d that won't inherit the node process from this so as soon as the node process goes to fault our other timer that's under here won't inherit the freeze blood timer will. Okay, so let's do a bit of renaming. We're going to rename this 2D to blood particles. Actually, we'll just rename this to enemy blood. And the blood particles, we will rename just to particles. This will actually have our script. That's going to be our enemy particles. We're not going to change any of that. All we're going to do is add another timer under the enemy blood. Add a timer. And we're going to call this fade out timer. And I'm going to give it 10 seconds. You can set the timer to however you want. I'm going to set it to one shot. And I'm going to set it to auto start. I'm going to make a new script for enemy blood node to the add script. And you're going to see it says load script. Because we already have a script called blood particles. And it's wanting to load that. But we're going we're gonna to change the name of it to enemy blood. That way it creates a new script that we can deal with the fading out without having the script getting frozen and this script's going to have a couple of functions we're going to have fade we're going to set that to false we're also going to make a, another variable we're going to call it alpha we're just going to set that to one we're going to do a process function i'm going to do underscore delta because we're not using delta and that just tells the engine that we're not using it then we're going to check if fade is true if you just write if fade that basically means it's true if fade is true alpha equals lerp alpha 0 to 0 0.1 so if you remember lerp basically interpolates this value so we're saying alpha equal to the interpolation of the alpha value and we're interpolating it back to zero because if the alpha is zero it will be completely transparent but any values below zero and one will be semi-transparent we're interpolating at 10 percent and you can change this value to a bit of a higher value to make it fade out quick but we're just going to leave that at 0.1 for now. So we're just going to write modulates.a for alpha equals our alpha value. That just sets the alpha. I could show you right now if we go to our enemy blood. We are setting the alpha of this node 2D and the particles will actually inherit this alpha. So if I go to modulate and I'm like, okay, let's change the alpha just down a bit. You could see that fades out until it's completely gone. So that's basically what we're doing here. Right now it's saying 0 to 255, but in the actual Godot engine, it uses 0 to 1. Turn on raw. It'll go 0 to 1. So that's basically what we're doing here. We're going to do an if statement right here. If alpha is less than 0 0.05 to 0, 0 0.005 Q free. The reasoning why we have to do if alpha is less than 0 0.05, why don't we just say if alpha is less than or equal to 0? Well, there's a thing with the lerp function. When it interpolates, it never actually hits the exact value. It gets really close to it. And so that's basically what the alpha is less than 0 0.05. Then we Q free. That's basically how we check if it's at a low enough value, then we can destroy it. Go back to our 2D scene, select your fade out timer, and we're going to go to node right here by inspector. We're going to connect the timeout signal. We're going to connect that back to the node 2D. And now that we have this connected, we can say fade equals true. When the fade out timer turns on, we set fade equal to true, and it's initially equal to false. 
then it fires this base it basically fires this statement in the process function and this has to be in the process because if we just try to throw a lerp in the timer the lerp will actually it needs to constantly be called so it could slowly interpolate to that value if you call it once it'll it will kind of make its way to that value, but it won't make it even close to that value. It'll just kind of do that one frame. That's basically why we had to throw lerp in the process function. So you can save this. We can go to our arena scene. And now if we run the game, you should see that this blood will stick around for like 10 seconds before it actually fades out. And you can see they're fading out now, which I think looks really nice because that way you don't have tons, <laughs> lots of blood all over the battlefield. A lot of games will actually benefit from having blood that stays permanently because it just looks cool for this one it just kind of gets in the way so we have to make it so it actually slowly fades away so basically we got blood fading out now so now let's set up a save system which will allow us to save our high score value where that's basically all we're going to save. we're going to set it up though so you can add multiple values you can want to save it will just save variable values so let's get right into that okay so for save system we are going to go into global will basically be where we're going to save our game because any object can call global so it'll just be the easiest and we're gonna set up a save function so function save and we're just gonna be setting up a save dictionary and in this dictionary you can name the different variables that you want to save so let's say we want to save high score so we'll just say high score and then you just do the colon and you say high score so now we're going to specify our key which is high score and our value of our key which is our high score value which is this variable up here so what this basically does is it gets the value so we can call this value like we want to find high score in our save dictionary and it pulls out our high score value right here now if you want to add other values to your dictionary this is very important you do commas and then you do your final value let's say i don't know you just do this as your value and then you say this is your value so you have to do commas and then the last value doesn't get a comma but since we only have one value we're just doing no commas for every value except for the last value you just do comma commas at the end let's say if you're specifying a array so let's say we want an array it's like this where you have value one and then you do a comma value two but you don't put a comma at two if that's your last value it's like doing that now the save function is going to return the save dictionary and if you don't recall what return does we did it up here in instance node if we call this function save this will return this value which is our save dictionary. So if I said var save dictionary equals save, now this save dictionary is going to equal this entire dictionary without having to write it all out. That's basically what it's doing. We have our save set up, but now we don't, it's not actually saving the game. All of it's doing is setting up a dictionary of our variable or variables in your case, if you're adding multiple values. Let's make it so we actually save the game. So function save game and we're just going to be setting up a save game function and we're going to set up in our variable var save game equals file dot new which does exactly what you think it does it makes a new file <laughs> then save game dot open and we're going to be using user colon slash slash save game dot save and we're going to be doing file dot right so what this does is it allows us to open this file at this location user save game dot save which if you're wondering where this location actually goes user goes into if you open up your file manager you can type in percent app data percent which goes into your app data roaming folder and you can scroll down and there is a godot folder app user data it will go in app user data and whatever you called your project in this case we call it wave your tutorial it will save your uh, save data right here as save game dot save and so if you're wondering where it goes that's basically where it will go save game dot store line to jace json save this basically stores it's like if you open notepad so I have my notepad window open basically just opens the notepad file and that save at file right so we're, we're setting it up so we can write data onto this save game file and then store line does basically what you're saying what it's saying right here is it gets our save dictionary which is our high score so store line will do 
high score and it will be your high score value. So let's say your high score was 10. It'll say high score dot dot 10 or colon 10, not dot dot. And this will save the line in your file after it stores the line. That's basically all it does. 2JSON is basically just the file saving type. I'm not an expert in this. That's a way of saving data. If I'm wrong, just let me know. So that's basically what we do. We get our save uh, dictionary right here and we parse it to JSON and store that as a line in our file, which is basically like notepad. Then we do save game.close, which basically saves our current changes and writes it out. So now, now that we can save the game, we need to be able to load that save file. So function load game. Now we're going to do another var save game equals file.new. Then we could say if not save game.file exists user save game dot save very important that this is the same as that because it's checking if this file exists so if this file does not exist then all we're going to do is say print error we don't have a save file to load which lets us know that the save file does not exist. We just return, which basically what return does in this case where you don't return a single variable, it's just like, okay, disregard all the code that we're about to put down here, disregard it and just cancel this entire function right here at, at this state. That's what it does if you just write return by itself. Now we're gonna do save game.open. Remember, it has to be the exact same. User save game.save open. You just paste that in. Then we're going to say file.read because we're writing the file before when we opened it, but now it's in a reading state where it's just going to read that file. So now you can do var current line equals parse JSON, which is basically just going to extract the JSON file data type stuff and basically get our save data from that current line. So we could do save data, I mean, save game dot get line, which gets the current line we are on and parses that so we can actually read it. And now we're gonna be setting a variable. Now we need to load our high score value. So what we can do is we could say high score equals current line high score. So now it's finding this high score key from this parsed current line. So it will say, oh, Get the high score score key from this dictionary and once you get this key this will basically return this current line stuff will return that high score we saved so if it was 10 it'll return 10 when we load the game and that's basically how we set up our our save and load system so let's say you add more saved variables you're gonna have to make sure you set that equal to the current line keep that same key that you assigned it to in the save function. So that's basically how you're going to be able to add multiple uh, variables when you save. The last thing we need to do is save game.close, which basically just closes it. So that's our save and load system all in. Um, now we need to actually save and load because we have the entire system in. Okay, we can technically save our high score only when the high score changes. But I think it'll just be easier once the player dies, we save. That way, if you guys have any other variables, everything will get saved across immediately, no matter what. So when we hit an enemy group right here in the player script, all we want to do is say global dot save game. Don't do save because that will just return the dictionary. You want to do save game. Now, when we run it, we're going to see that we don't have a file to load. Yeah, error. We don't have a save file to load. So let's make a save file. We'll kill some enemies. We'll get a high score and let's see if it works. I'm going to die right here. But this doesn't mean anything, this high score value, because we haven't loaded anything. That only gets loaded when the scene starts. So let's exit out of the game. We can actually check in our file system. And you can see, oh, we have a save game.save now. So let's run the game again and see if it actually loads our high score. And immediately the first round already says I had 30. So the save system works great. You basically just have a save system and load system that will save your variables and whatever you need. If you have a shop system, you could save all the items that you have and 
all of that. And it's very expandable. Um, but there's a major problem to it right now. If you go into file, the file explorer and open the save file, oh, this is really readable. Anyone can open the save file if they find it. And they're like, oh, I want 2000 score. Oh my gosh. That's not 2000, that's 20,000. And we save the game and then we run it in the editor. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I got 20,000. I'm so good at this game. And we probably don't want that. We want to be. We don't want people to be editing their save file and cheating on the game because that just isn't fair for everyone else. So I'm going to set this back to what I had before, which I think was like 20. So to fix this, we're going to go back in their global and we're going to be setting up an encryption on this. Encryption gets pretty complicated, but Skoda automatically has a open encrypted with pass function that will automatically do all the hard encryption stuff for us that will make the file unreadable for the user let's go in here and in the save game when we say open we're going to write open encrypted with pass so what this is going to do is this is going to open an encrypted file with a pass which it will basically just be like i don't know text so this will be our encryption key let's set that as enc for encryption or something then we can do the same thing down here when we load the game it has to be the exact same open encrypted with pass make the function enc that will basically be our encryption key now this won't it, this won't work with our old save file because it's not going to be able to read it now that we're opening with encrypted so I'll have to delete that file then we can run the game and everything should work as we had set up before. And you can see I got an error. I actually called, I spelled encrypted wrong. <laughs> My bad, I forgot the R. There we go. And if we just put an R in each of these encrypted, there we go. Now we should be able to run it without problems. <laughs> so let's say I get my all time best high score of 10 and I die. Now that's, now that's our score of 10. So let's say I exit, we open it again and our high score is still 10. Now let's actually try going in our file and if we rage quit, so we wanna get a really high, high score and be all of our friends. So I open it and I'm like, whoa, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to edit this. You're gonna see all these like random characters and you're not gonna be able to figure this out. Now there still are ways around this. <laughs> This isn't the top tier system, but it'll get most people out of your safe system editing. What they could do though, is there's still, there's still a vulnerability because we're using ENC as our encryption method every time. So let's say they got an old save file. They rename that file so the game doesn't see that. And then they have a new file come in and they compare those files and decrypt it. Now that's, that's super advanced. We don't need to go that far in the safe system. But it's just some stuff to keep in mind if you're trying to make a game. I think it works just fine for now. If you wanted to stop that, you could just generate a uh, unique ID. I believe Kill.Dot has one. You can just use unique IDs and try to get them out from decrypting that way. But that's basically how you do a safe system. Now there's just one more thing that we want to do before we end this tutorial series. Let's go to enemy core. A lot of you guys are saying you're setting this up. I just want to set this up for anyone that hasn't yet. And that's a points for the enemies. You might want to have enemies that drop multiple points or more points than another enemy. To do this, what we can do is we can just do in our export integer var point value. We just set that to 10 as the default value. And then you could just say, instead of adding global dot points plus equals 10 when they die, just add point value. Simple fix, just easy so you can add multiple enemies that have different points so let's say i went into enemy 2 and we just go in that scene let's say okay we want point value to be 20 because these guys are harder and then we save it run the arena and i'm getting more points from those guys than the red guys so random plugin my game is coming out soon weaponeer if you guys haven't heard of it it's a game i've been working on for a while now i think it's been four months so I'm about to release in like four days. So I'll be making a video about that game. And I hope you guys will try out the game. Um, it's a lot of fun working on it. And I'm, f I'm happy that I'm finally getting it finished. Because at the end stages of development, it gets really difficult. But I was able to pull through and the game is coming out soon. Check out my itch.io. It will be in the description. And you can just check that. And on launch day, I'll have it out on the itch.io. I'll also have a Google Play link. So thanks for watching the Wave Shooter tutorial series. I really enjoyed making this and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And I'll see you guys whatever video I'll make next.